Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. So, wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. Ever since the release of Valve's Half-Life 2, physics in gaming has done nothing but dwindle. A game that came out over 15 years ago left such a monumental advancement in the industry has nearly all but been ignored. The reality is outside of VR, which is more like a niche side branch in gaming exclusive to most gamers, games haven't truly taken any lessons from Half-Life 2 and pushed physics forward. I'll go deep into detail over each generation's top games released since Half-Life 2's release, but it's quite disappointing that nearly every game, don't take that too literal, please, completely misses the opportunity to be more unique. The Nintendo 64 had games that broke boxes with physics. Can we really not attempt innovation in physics in a more robust way in modern gaming? Now, I get it. This isn't a black and white dichotomy of zero games have done anything, but the AAA games really haven't done that much. With how many resources they have beyond indie games, it's very disappointing. I did mention no VR, but when Boneworks and another Valve game, Half-Life Alex, are really the only ones trying to innovate and push the dynamic of physics forward, it feels like a lost cause, and it shouldn't be unless everyone enjoys the same games over and over with a different coat of paint. How excited can you really get over another generic FPS, open world game that imitates the 10,000 before it, another multiplayer clone you've played many times before? But hold on for just a moment. I need to explain more in detail what exactly I'm referring to and what exactly is going on in game design. A not so brief history lesson for you. The Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and as always PC generated a wave of entertainment shaping the transformation from 2D flat environments and artwork to a fully 3D environment. I did not say first 3D games ever made, so chill. Games like Super Mario 64 paved the way for this exciting new direction in the industry. Along with this, the environments and levels were also formed into three dimensions, or 3D for short. Now to loosely explain level design in a nutshell, objects and scenery are what are known as static or static props, meaning they don't move and the character can't change the dynamics of it. Nowadays in gaming, a character may interact with a static prop, but the object itself or building has no visible response. Something like hitting a barrel or wall with a sword, wrench, or a crowbar, and the barrel or wall having no response, being static in nature. Typically, in current games, you will see a damage decal and sound effect to give the illusion of changing the interacted with surface. These will typically disappear after a short time. Now, there are games in this era which did use some minor physics. But a lot of what is seen is still mostly animated effects which don't actually use physics or interact with the in-game character. An example would be hitting a box or a barrel that explodes or falls apart, but the pieces that fall are predetermined through their reaction animation. If you were to hit that same looking box or barrel in different locations, it would repeat the same animation with the exact same placement of the broken pieces and particles every single time. True in-game physics go a bit beyond that. We see early implementation of more truthful in-game physics in the original Half-Life. Anything from pushing around crates in any direction you want, a box being smashed to pieces, has debris that never lands exactly the same way. Another way games were about to change was with, uh, 
dead bodies. Yep. Dead bodies are on another turning point in the industry. The term ragdoll physics took what used to be uninteractive animations or static props and turned them into interactive bodies that collided with the environment and sometimes objects. What once were disappearing corpses that made little sense in disappearing now became interactive bodies to humorously flail about. Ironically, some games still to this day have corpses disappeared. You see this a lot more often in games that can't handle the information and the data. Sometimes with smaller studios, indie studios that don't know how to really handle that, do they just have them disappear or they do a cool looking effect that disappears. A lot of times this involves something like disintegration. All right, so let's fast forward a bit. The year is 2004 and after what seemed like an eternity, in reality, the sequel to what is regarded as one of the best games of all time and is finally released in Half-Life 2. Also one of gaming's best games all time. Whatever your opinion may be on the game or story, doesn't matter because you're wrong. And secondly, because what this game did at the time was push the industry forward. Sadly, to this day, we haven't really gone farther in advancing gaming physics. In fact, it almost seems like we have gone backwards to a degree. Before we get to that, what Half-Life 2 brought was an advancement in physics for all of gaming. Using what was basic in gaming nature with box breaking and simple objects morphed into more advanced real world physics. Half-Life 2 established a higher ground for expectations. Numerous objects in the environment became interactive. Items such as tin cans, tires, rocks, old Chinese fast food containers, a large amount of items and water dynamics were integrated. Not only that, but now the player could stand on a plank, drop a large rock on the opposite side, the counterweight's impact lifted you up high before the inevitable drop back down to earth with gravity. Throw a heavy object in water, watch it sink. A light object, float. Physics-based reactions became part of gaming. New innovative ways to make and solve puzzles in games became reality. Half-Life 2 didn't stop there though. They added a physics-based gun and enabled the player to now shoot objects scattered around. Broadening the scope of possibility. What the newest Half-Life at the time did was break open a realm of possibility for gaming. Sadly, most of which would be ignored or borrowed at a lesser experience than what was just given. With Half-Life 2 seemingly breaking gaming reality, what would gaming cultures do next in response? The answer is sadly very little. The current generation of gaming consoles at the time present involved the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and original Xbox. Thing is, Valve only saw Xbox as a possibility and shockingly managed to port the game for Xbox, but at a high cost of deeply reducing quality of graphics, but by some miracle managing to keep a lot of physics intact, although still reducing those same effects. You will notice box breaking got nerfed, particle effects nearly extinct, and other workarounds to have the game optimized on outdated hardware. Side note, Valve's source engine is their own in-house physics engine derived loosely by modifying V physics from Havoc's physics engine. The Havoc engine, as you may know, is one of gaming's most widely used physics engines in gaming, still to this day currently used in some games. PC gaming had just taken a giant step forward and the current generation of consoles lagged far behind. Now, Half-Life 2 did eventually release on the original Xbox, but it was such a technical downgrade, it was clear consoles at the time had a long ways to go to catch up. Could the next generation of games, gameplay, catch up and the consoles take what Half-Life 2 gave and either match it or push it further? Well, still pretty much uh, no. The PlayStation 3, 
Xbox 360, and Nintendo Wii would kick off with two of the three battling for graphic quality and power, while Nintendo diverted from the race for innovation in a different capacity. With Nintendo out of the cards, as the Nintendo Wii was essentially a glorified GameCube Pro when it came to power, that left Sony and Microsoft to duke it out. We're not here for console wars though, so what exactly happened with the games featured on these platforms? The highlights of both consoles are roughly The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, Halo 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Bioshock, Gears of War, Borderlands, Dead Space, Fallout 3, Dishonored, Assassin's Creed 2, Mass Effect, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, and a lot, lot more. But I'm trying to cover the generation's rough layout of lifespan from 2005 to 2012. Titles that really premiered in the next gen, but made it at the end or shortly after, are bundled with the next leap. So, for example, games like The Last of Us, which was in 2013, even though PS3 was around, PS4 kicked off. What did all these games have in common, though? Most of them, some of which came out many years after Half-Life 2's release, either nearly matched or downgraded the use of physics entirely, throwing them out the window, saying, who gives a damn? Now, I should have mentioned earlier, but a game not utilizing physics to the max isn't necessarily a negative. In fact, many games are best optimized for a smoother gaming experience because they don't utilize many physics or dynamic interactive objects. The more advanced effects and computations a gaming system or PC have to make, the more taxing. That's why, still to this day, games get leggy when too many explosions, particle effects, and advanced physics-based simulations occurring on the screen simultaneously will result in poor performance. All those games I just mentioned have barebone physics, typically of destructible explosive barrels, crates, common household items maybe. Most things that seem physics-based in this generation are more often animations like in the Uncharted series with the trains hanging over cliffs and the explosions that occur in in-game cutscenes. Bioshock looked like it may have pushed water to the next level at the time until you realize that all the water is just a textured flat plane and the faked interaction of a splash is just an added effect on top, not an actual physics simulation. They did very well on making it look good at the time, but far from water simulated flowing down the stairs and pooling up, in fairness to them, that'd be quite the tall order, and it's not like Half-Life 2 did anything super crazy special except with surface dynamics of their water. So those things probably would have killed the game from running ever if they were to attempt to do that. I will say, in select areas that are specified, some surfaces of water in Bioshock actually do allow you to interact with the dead body using the Havoc engine, allowing them to float and somewhat interact. But most of the really cool looking bodies of water that are spraying out of tunnels and flooding hallways and corridors aren't really interactive. And I should mention that Bioshock came out three years after the release of Half-Life 2. It's not like they couldn't have had time to look at what Half-Life did, but you don't really know the circumstances of how they created Bioshock. Maybe they had technical difficulties, maybe they did attempt to and just sacrificed it so it could be budgeted for lower spec hardware like the PS3 and Xbox 360. But to backtrack a little bit, quite honestly, this current generation was still limited by hardware and wasn't likely ever going to push the narrative for improving physics in gaming. November 2013. Gaming drops the next newest generation of consoles, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Wow, you gotta be kidding me, Microsoft. One. Not to be confused with Xbox One. This is Xbox One. And of course, Nintendo is off permanently doing its own thing, la di da di da, with the GameCube Pro 2. Or should I say the Wii U? 
released a year earlier, but Nintendo established hardware isn't their focus anymore. Very smart on their part as they are no longer in need of spending tons of money up front in a loss in order to stick with the latest and greatest. This theme continues even with the Nintendo Switch, so we are done mentioning them. Sad. Moving right along, PS4 and Xbox One will get a large assortment of video game gold, mostly on the PS4, <clears throat> with Bloodborne, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Horizon Zero Dawn, Grand Theft Auto V, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, and eventually near the end of their console's lifespans, God of War, Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, and 7 and 8, Monster Hunter World, Ghost of Tsushima. The point being is there are quite a lot and way too many more that I didn't mention. Now, what this generation establishes is that most of these if not all of these, look graphically better than Half-Life 2. We're not discussing graphics though. We're here for physics. Did we match or improve upon physics in any of these titles or one not yet mentioned from this generation? Mind you, technically, current gen has officially moved on to the next generation, even though most gamers are still relegated to the quote, last gen. The earliest games of this generation of hardware are Bloodborne, The Witcher 3, Uncharted 4, and GTA 5. How do these hold up? Bloodborne is about as basic as it can get for physics. It essentially does the industry standard of box breaking, most world objects being static in nature. Alright, so Witcher 3, one of my all time personal favorites, so it personally hurts me to diminish this game in any capacity but it does pretty well with the boat breaking physics and sinking. That it does well that is pretty different from other games. Those hold up nicely. Otherwise, in the rest of the world, it is pretty generic as far as physics go. You'll see this correlation in most open world games. And that's mostly due to the game being in need of being optimized as the first priority because if you had physics and dynamic effects everywhere in an open world game, it'd be game breaking. And to expand on that just a little bit, that's mostly due to hardware limitations. And as we get further and further with advancements in technology, that should be less and less of an issue. But getting back to The Witcher 3, there are your typical physics for a few minor world objects, still a lot of static props, as all of these are, not just props, but Buildings are static. In case you're wondering about why buildings being static matters, when Half-Life 2 doesn't have any either, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, which is released three years after Half-Life 2, does have partially collapsible buildings using physics with their shiny new invention, cinematic physics, which allow in-game physics during cutscene-like occurrences, but it's not actually a cutscene with animations, it's actually physics occurring in real-time gameplay. This new grand feature allowed for things like bridges, buildings to collapse, all in real-time generated and computed by the console or computer itself, not relying on pre-done animations or effects. And surprise, the game is on both systems. Now, in the case of these last two games, it doesn't make sense for buildings to collapse but it is an opportunity to include physics outside the norm, which these and the rest don't utilize. Now, as graphics and illusions of physics in games get more and more advanced, it becomes harder to dissect, which is the case for Uncharted 4, with how graphically impressive it is, it's also doing a lot of trickery that makes it harder to distinguish between animation or physics effects. There are parts of this game that are pre-rendered sections where things seem to be physics based but were actually done previously as an animation done in 3D software that is a physics simulation done in that software but it's put into the game engine and that animation will be the same every single time. A bit complicated to explain if you aren't aware of 3D animation or level design in gaming but if you look at the sequence in Uncharted 4 where Nathan Drake is being dragged by a rope on the side of a bridge by a truck with a crane. We see him thrusted into a stack of structure wood pillars. 
Now, this is very likely something that will shatter the exact same way every single time. That's how you tell if something is a previously done animation or if it's different every time, it's then physics based. There are an array of things in Uncharted that are physics based. This game blends the two very well, so this is a little bit harder to distinguish. But if we look at the clips of in-game footage and compare the clip to other games in-game footage of the same scene and see how the animation compares or the physics simulation, then we can tell if it's the exact same, we know that it was done previously and baked in or it actually is a physics simulation. So now that we're back to modern day gaming, in case you forgot the goal, it's to improve upon the foundation Half-Life 2 set back in 2004. Have we accomplished this yet? I'd say we greatly improve in trickery. We're able to fake physics very well as animations, but the same trope of barrels and boxes is largely the default still. Sure, it might be cooler that now a wider array of objects have physics, but all we did was replace a coat of paint with another. A box is now a garbage bag, a tire, a weapon, why not a glass full of water, breaking into pieces with a water stain or a puddle as an advancement. I think gaming has gotten too comfortable with what works and sure, caring about physics and gaming may seem like a small niche thing that most may not care about. I'd say that ignorance is bliss and if gamers saw potential, they may actually start to care. We're nearing the point where graphics aren't really going to advance much further. Realism may be an end goal of graphics, but I argue movies and games have nearly reached that end point, yet games haven't come close to realism in physics, outside of basic implementation. Our advancements in one facet are left behind in another. I'd absolutely love a game where you can interact and collapse a building entirely on an enemy, or have two logs simultaneously swing and collide into an enemy, resulting in an explosion of said enemy, and furry little creatures then celebrate in victory. That seems weirdly specific. There's such a realm of possibility, but at the end of the day, I'm sure the copied coat of paint makes more money. As a final thought, I'd like to say I do appreciate the indie developers that actively try to push things in new and exciting ways. I know there's a lot out there. I know there are certain indie games that actually do use physics. They're just lesser known, and a lot of their dynamics aren't incorporated into AAA games ever. They're just the one-trick pony, so to speak, that get thrown under the rug. I was more so targeting those larger studios when discussing this entirety of the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did I miss any AAA games with advancements in physics? What would you like to see games pushing for in regards to physics in gaming? As always, thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time on Heathobox. Box. this evening at 1900 hours in the level 3 facility. The semi-finals for high security personnel will be announced in a separate secure access transmission. Remember, more lives than your own may depend on your fitness. Do you have a friend or relative who would make a valuable addition to the Black Mesa team? Immediate openings are available in the areas of materials handling and low clearance security.
Please contact Black Mesa personnel for further information. If you have an associate with a background in the areas of theoretical physics... Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. Biotechnology or other high-tech disciplines, please contact our civilian recruitment division. The Black Mesa Research Facility is an equal opportunity employer.